from a beautiful fashion model to execution. This is the downfall and brutal events of Jenny Wanda Barkman. Jenny Wanda Barkman, the Studhoff concentration camp's youngest warden, became legendary for her heinous cruelty. It's difficult to think that a vicious monster was hiding out as a pretty student. The inmates dubbed her Mad Jenny and Beautiful Ghost and cursed her for many years after her death. Jenny Wanda Barkman's biography is quite unknown. She was born in an impoverished German family in Hamburg on May 22, 1922. Her father worked as a dock worker, while her mother was a homemaker. Jenny grew up like any other kid, playing with dolls and fantasizing about being an actor. After finishing high school, the girl who was endowed with a particularly attractive beauty by nature began a career as a fashion model. The outbreak of war did not discourage Bartman from filming her German periodicals and commercials. But something happened in the life of this beauty at the beginning of 1944. Jenny abruptly abandoned her modeling profession and accepted a position as a warden at the Stutthof concentration camp in Danzig. What compelled the 21-year-old girl to choose a job in this nightmare is unclear. But we could assume that she was probably drawn in by the high pay and opportunities for advancement available to guards. Or perhaps Sparkman's craving for dominance over others had awakened. On the other hand, Jenny passed the interview and was hired as an overseer. The former model demonstrated a desire for devotion and unique brutality from the very first days of work. Most of Studhoff's population consisted of Jewish and Polish women and children. Barkman thrashed detainees savagely and sent many of them to the gas chambers. Jenny's creativity in torturing her victims astounded even her co-workers at times. Externally, the supervisor of Barkman appeared to be a fragile, clever student, which made her much more terrifying. The number of Mad Jenny victims is unknown, but she is said to have been involved in the murders of hundreds of captives and killed dozens herself. Such turbulent activity did not leave the matron with illusions. She then evacuated Studoff as soon as Soviet forces approached in 1945. Jenny Wanna Barkman rose to prominence as one of the most wanted Nazi criminals, but even with this title, she was able to avoid prosecution for four months. The investigators were unable to determine where she spent this time or who assisted her. Fortunately, the sadist's personal profile with the photo was maintained at the concentration camp, and the captives recalled her well in person. Pictures and descriptions of Mad Jenny were distributed all over Europe, and she was soon apprehended. Barkman was preparing to leave Poland when she was apprehended by a military patrol at the gang's train station. Jenny testified during the initial interrogation that she had always treated Jews well and had never harassed inmates. Furthermore, she claimed to have covertly assisted the oppressed and even spared them from death. The image of the Studoff monster did not correspond to the appearance or behavior of the modest girl. Barkman even deceived one of the prison guards. Joseph Lies, a Polish army corporal of Jewish origin, became so moved by the girl's stories that he began to sympathize with her. The Nazi criminal pleaded with Lias to allow her to leave for a few hours. According to the girl, this would at least be sufficient evidence of innocence. However, the corporal viewed Barkman's case documents with frightened images of her victims in time and did not make a catastrophic mistake. Joseph Lias was furious about what he observed because his parents and many friends had died in German death camps. The corporal stopped talking to Jenny and the villain's last hope for redemption vanished like smoke. Dozens of surviving Studoff inmates testified in court against Jenny Barkman. Hundreds of documents discovered in the camp office confirmed their words. The lawyer attempted to establish a defense for his client based on her mental health. He argued that no ordinary human could do the atrocities described to Barkman, particularly since she had no reason to dislike anyone. But Barkman didn't appear insane. As a matter of fact, she laughed contemptuously at all of the lawyer's and prosecutor's arguments and allegations. Jenny did not scream for or appeal for clemency when the death sentence was announced. Instead, she listened to everything quietly and left off the words, Life is truly a great pleasure, and pleasure on average does not last long. But Barkman did not give the impression of being insane. In fact, she laughed contemptuously at all the arguments and allegations that the attorney and the prosecutor made. Jenny did not scream or make an appeal for clemency when the death sentence was announced. Instead, 
She listened to everything quietly and afterward left off the words, Life is truly great pleasure and pleasure on the average does not last long. Wise choice of words from a lady about to die, don't you think? Barkman and 10 other war criminals were carried to the execution site on Biscup Hill outside Gantz early on July 4, 1946. Over 200,000 people gathered to see the execution of the damn executioners. Many people had traveled long distances to see the execution of their tormentors and the executioners of their families and friends. Cripple Joseph Lies was also among the onlookers. Nobody was going to bother with criminals and gangs like they were in Nuremberg. That even a professional executor carried out the execution. The condemned were transported under the large gallows on trucks. Nooses were placed around their necks and the automobile drove away. The car refused to start when it was Bartman's turn. The hiccup produced a murmur among the large crowd. Then a former stud-off prisoner ran to the car and simply pushed Jenny out of the back. Hundreds of people raced to her dangling body on a rope as soon as she died. Everyone desired to have a button or an item of clothing executed as a souvenir. But given what this woman had done, it is impossible to blame them for anything. But even the death of Mad Jenny was insufficient to atone for her heinous acts. Following the matron's death, rumors circulated about her dismal funeral. People spared the story that Barkman was burned and her ashes were sent to Hamburg. They were supposedly tossed into the apartment's toilet where this monstrosity was born. Of course, it was all a lie. But at the time, no one could bother with a villainous corpse, cremate it, and then scatter the ashes. Like the others executed, Jenny's body was transferred to Gant's Antonomical Theater. They were used as visual aids for medical students before being discarded as biological waste. As a result, the deceased filth provided some service to civilization. We can confront the depths of human brutality and the complexity of our own nature in the harrowing narrative of Jenny Wanda Barkman's gruesome murder. Her tragic end forces us to consider the delicate line between good and evil that exists within all of us. Beyond its historical backdrop, her story encourages us to confront oppressive structures and actively work for a more compassionate society. It also reminds us of our shared responsibility to encourage empathy, understanding, and human decency. It compels us to reflect on the past, ourselves, and strive for a future defined by compassion and justice. But we cannot all control human behavior. And as much as there will be those who are all good, there will always be those who are all bad. The universe has its way of balancing things, so you can only hope for your own safety. See you next time. Until then, take care.